watching FAF Television Network. Reaching nations, touching lives, and transforming generations.
share this broadcast to at least five or ten people and let, let them know that we are on for the first service and God will bless us greatly. Amen. Just go ahead and share. Just go ahead and share. Kindly do share the broadcast and we get into uh, the word of God. I'm going to be talking to us on the subject, the God of green pastures. And uh, this is a word that um, actually God has given me for the church in this season that he still the same yesterday, today and forever. And so without much ado, I want us to go into the word of God. And my prayer is that by the end of this session, your life will not remain to be the same again. Also in the same breath, remember to join me tonight at 7 p.m. for our second service. It shall be glorious in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I'll begin by saying, child of God, the nature of God is revealed by the name of God. The nature of God is revealed by the name of God. Our revelation of who God is is dependent on the encounters we have with God. And that is why if you look in the Bible, anytime a servant of God had an encounter with God, he gave God a given name. We look in the Bible and we see Moses uh, meeting God, in, uh, looking for God up the mountain. He was not in the fire. He was not in the earthquake. He was not in uh, the wind, but he was in a small, still voice. And we see a God who relates with us and wants us to go to the still places where he can relate with us. But then we see with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, God reveals himself to them and to the uh, uh, Babylonians uh, in the fire. And so I want you to understand as I, as I speak on the God of green pastures, that God will always reveal himself to us depending on the revelation we have. In other words, I'm simply saying that your realities are shaped by your revelations. Your realities are shaped by your revelation. The 24 elders bow down before God day and night. They never get tired because every time they worship God, there is a face of God that is revealed to them. And I've come to a conclusion in my personal walk with God that every time I worship my God with the revelation of who He is in my life, I see that God made manifest in my life. And my prayer for you this morning is that may God be made manifest in your life as you understand that He's still a God of green pastures in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say Amen. Somebody say Amen. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. Where are you watching from? And uh, let us uh, be blessed together in the name of Jesus. I want us to go to the book of Psalms, chapter 23. It is a common psalm and we, we love it. I believe uh, we have come across the book of Psalm, chapter 23. And I just want us to go there uh, because th this is gonna be this is gonna be a good case study today. And I want us to go to Psalm 23. And I want us to see a few things about the God of green pastures. Uh, this is very critical, church. Uh, we are in a season, we are in a season of transition. And, and God does not want you to remain in the same uh, comfort zone. The other day I released the daily manna, the prophetic word God gave me. And one of the things that was captured very clearly in that word was that God does not want us to be in the place of comfort. God wants us to be in the place of moving. God is always transitioning us from one level to another, from glory to glory. And if you align yourself with the timing and the seasons, then you'll be able to understand there is something happening. There's a paradigm shift. And if you're not connected well to this shift, then you'll remain the same. Amen. I know churches are open, but this is our, 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 we've been doing live service. This is just uh, our last service that we're not gathering together on here but of course once we resume church we shall still be online so i just want to, re to remind you also that next sunday somebody praise the lord next sunday we shall be in church as uh, usual 
in the name of Jesus. We prayed for seven days. On the seventh day, God spoke. I know you saw the prophecy. And even the church in Kenya, we prayed all together. And we are careful to give God the glory for what he has done in our lives. In Jesus' name. Are you there? Psalms 23. Psalms chapter 23. Uh, this is always the shepherd's psalm. When we look at Psalms 23, we are talking about the shepherd's psalm. And, and uh, before we get to the scripture, um, I want us to understand that the meditation of David here is comparing God as a good shepherd. You see, like I began by saying, your revelation dictates, I mean, your, your revelation of who God is dictates the nature of, 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 of your God. It also dictates your life. How you believe in God depends on your revelation. And that is why if you have had an encounter with the Holy Ghost, what makes us believe and confess and profess boldly our God is because you have encountered this God. Praise the name of the Lord. If you have had an encounter with God at a personal level, then there are some things that you cannot be able to. Sometimes someone cannot withdraw you from the love of God because your encounter is more personal than it is corporate. And that is why God desires that each one of us may come to know him. Paul writes and says that I may know him more and the power of his resurrection. That after I have known him, this is Paul, this is not just another person. This is Paul who wrote the epistle. He says, I may know him more. That every time I try to know God more, something always pushes me to know him even more better, even much more. Praise the name of the Lord. And my prayer is, can we come to a place of knowing him for who he is? And not what he gives us because majority of, of believers today are loving God because of what he's given them but the, 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 their relationship ends on what they receive but not who God is so if God gives you the food today the best you can do is to pray and then say father thank you for the meal after you've eaten you forget about God but I want us to shift from the materialistic mentality and begin to know God at a personal level when God reveals himself to us, when God revealed himself to people like, uh, like David, he saw their God as a shepherd. When God revealed himself to people like uh, Ma uh, Manoah, uh, uh, the, the, these are people who are barren, but then Samson comes out and then God blesses them. When God reveals himself to people like Hannah, they say, this is the God who keeps us children. You know, God reveals himself in different dimensions. And I want us to get in the depth of this in the next few minutes. And I believe God will bless us tremendously. So, this is a place where David is meditating. And he's comparing God as a good shepherd. And, and we see Israel was a desert. Hence, finding pasture and water was very difficult. Israel was now in a desert place and finding water was difficult. But then we see the character and the nature of a good shepherd. You can, we, we, when we see the nature and the character, the nature and the character, the nature and the character, nature is what is within a person. Character is what forms the outward uh, expression of that person is as a result of the nature the inward uh, ability or the inward uh, the inward drive of a person so because the the nature of god is a loving god now the character of a shepherd automatically comes out very clear in this particular uh scripture when i'm talking about the god of green pastures i also want us to point our 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 our, our focus uh, to something very important that you can't understand God as a shepherd without the nature and posture of a sheep. I will repeat that again. If you're writing down, you're not take that very clearly. You cannot understand God as a shepherd until you take the nature and posture of a sheep. I will say that again. You can't understand God as a good shepherd until you take the posture and the nature of a sheep. That is why I began by saying your revelation, uh, your realities are shaped by your revelation. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we together up to here? Are we together up to here? Please comment as we continue. Just put the notes down there as we continue. When I'm talking about the God of green pastors, what is pastor saying when he's talking about the God of green pastors. Now, 
Psalms chapter 23. Psalms chapter 23. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In describing the Lord as a shepherd, David wrote out of his own experience because he has spent his early years caring for the sheep. You can find that in First Samuel chapter 16, verse 10 to 11. And you know, sheep are completely dependent on the shepherd for provision, for guidance, and for protection. When we are looking at the Lord as our shepherd, we are looking at him as the God who gives us providence, who gives us guidance, and gives us protection. Somebody, if God has given you protection, if God has given you guidance, if God has given you uh, if God has given you a uh, provision, then you should be able to understand that the Lord is your shepherd. There are things that I want us to understand here. When we talk about the Lord is my shepherd, we are talking about a solidified relationship with God. Listen, when Jesus comes down on earth, he is coming with a mandate to seek that which was lost. He said, I have come to seek that which was lost. And when I look in the Bible, I see one thing that was lost is the relationship between God and man. When Adam made a mistake and fell short of the grace and the glory of God, he was kicked out of Aden, and Aden means the presence of God. That is the place where God dwelt, and he was supposed to be a custodian, a guardian of the very presence of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And when Adam messed up with Eve, he was kicked out of the garden, and there were cherubims that were put on the garden with flaming swords. That if man has to come back to his place, Karopata, I feel something being released this morning. If man has to come back to the original place, then there must be a bloodshed. Because when swords are drawn, then it is time for war. But God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish or shall not go back by the way of the sword, but shall come back to God and have a relationship and have a communion and have a fellowship, praise the name of the Lord. And that is why we are not saved by the blood of the bulls and the rams. We are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And what God demands of us, God demands a relationship. God demand, demands a, a, a fellowship. God demands us to come into a personal relationship with him. And that is why if you have not been having fellowship in the time of lockdown, then your life is locked down. Your relationship is locked down. But if you've been fellowshipping with God, then you can surely say that the Lord has been your shepherd. When people are crying of hunger, he has been the God of the green pastures. He's been a God who supplies. He's been a God of guidance. He's been a God of provision. He's been a God who shows up when everybody shows up. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. That means we are coming to a place of relationships. God now commands us. The days of ignorance, he overlooked them. But now God is commanding you and I to come to a place of repentance. And repentance is the way to building a relationship with the Father. Oh, Sharabakadabahada. Somebody, if you are following me, say, I hear you, man of God. This is very critical. The Lord is my shepherd. So that means God, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, God, the creator, the Lord. You see, everything that begins with God will always end in joy. Ah. Whatever begins with God will always end in joy. And that is why there is nothing like misery for a child of Zion. There is nothing like misery, hopelessness for a child of God. Because them that know their God, the Bible says they will do exploits. Them that know their God, whatever they ask in his name, he shall supply to them. And I declare this morning, as you're watching me live right now, I declare this morning, may the Lord be your shepherd by reason of a relationship with the Father. If you're not born again at the end of the service, I'm going to make an altar call and I'm going to require, ask you to make a bold step and give your life to Jesus. So God is calling us to a place of a relationship. Then he says, I shall not want. I shall not want. 
You see, the Bible calls Jesus, calls Jesus in the New Testament, the Good Shepherd. And I want us to cross over to John chapter 10, and we look at Jesus as the Good Shepherd. Jesus as the Good Shepherd. Jesus as the Good Shepherd. In the book of John chapter 10, the Bible says, I tell you the truth, anyone who speaks, speaks over the wall of a sheep rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber but the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep you know for some of us who grew up in the village and we had the you know we, we had the opportunity to take care of sheep and goat the other day i posted on facebook uh, and i made fun out of something and i said that what you got, and I posted a photo of myself uh, taking care of the of, uh, of the of the cattle, and and that's just how it is. If you are the shepherd, if you are the shepherd of the flock, hallelujah! If you are the shepherd of the flock, then now this is what it means. It means that you cannot enter the sheepfold by crossing over the fence. You always enter the sheepfold by the gate because you know you own these things. You take care of these things. And until you understand this, that as a shepherd and as a sheep, there is a relationship. The, 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 the Bible says that the sheep will know the voice of its shepherd. Now it says here, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him uh, and the sheep recognizes his voice and come to him. And that is why the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, I think Jeremiah 3, 15, something like that, it says that I will give you shepherds, I will give you shepherds after my own heart and the work of the shepherd will be to feed you with what with knowledge and understanding the bible also says that my people perish for lack of knowledge now when you have a shepherd there is no way you can perish for lack of knowledge because the work of the shepherd is to feed you with knowledge and understanding now the work of the sheep your work is to be connected to the shepherd now the shepherd has to point you to the green pastures. Mm, my goodness, I'm heading somewhere. The work of the shepherd is to point you to the green pastures. And I'm coming down a short while. Because the shepherd by himself is not a source. He is just a resource that is pointing you to the source. Because God is the source. And, and that is why Paul writes and says, follow me as I follow Christ. Because this thing does not end with me. There is somewhere I'm heading to. And this place I'm heading to, that is where I want you to be as well. As your pastor, as your prophet, I want to follow me as I follow Christ. Because at the end of the day, as a resource, I want us to connect to the source. So he says, the Lord is my shepherd, and that's a relationship. You cannot ask for supply before there is a relationship. Before there is a relationship. Then he says he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. So God knows you by your name. No matter what you're going through right now, no matter what you're facing right now, I want to put it at the back of your mind that God knows you by your name. Please type your name right there and say, God knows me by my name. Say, God knows me by my name. Type and say, God knows me by my name in the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And then after he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. Hello, Padaba. You know, the Jews had a culture of leading the flock from ahead. Now, in the African setup, we lead our flock from behind, which is wrong. The sheep, I, I, have, I have some puppies here. Uh, I have some beautiful puppies. By the way, if you want puppies, look for me, look for me. Look for me. I have some beautiful puppies. My, my, my dog gave birth to very beautiful puppies, a German Spitz and a Border Collie. And we had some very, we have some very beautiful six puppies here. And anytime I'm going to give my puppies food, normally they know the time when they're supposed to eat. And when I take the plate and I, I, I put food there, you will see them follow me. They will always follow me. Now, signs of a good shepherd is and the shepherd goes ahead of the flock and the flock follows the shepherd. Are you following me? So, and why do they follow? It is because when I tell my puppies, for instance, I'm, I'm using puppies as an example, when I tell my puppies, it's time to eat and I, I do, you know, I do my hands like this, they will come running to where I am. That means they know that we are now about to be fed. Now, who is feeding us is our owner, is our master. 
And dogs have a way of being loyal to their master. You, I will tell them, sit, and you will see all of them take a back posture. And when I put the food there, and they will come and eat. Because the shepherd knows that the sheep needs to be nourished. I know when they need water. I know when they need to eat. I know when they need to go on the evening walks. Because something about a shepherd is, does the, 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 the I mean, about the sheep is, is, that does the sheep know the voice of the shepherd? As your pastor, I am also pastor. I know the voice of my shepherd. When he calls, I answer. Because I know when his life I tune in. Because I know I can only be connected and hear the voice of my shepherd. And that's how I'll be nourished. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Is somebody getting me this morning? Is somebody getting me this morning? So they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. Verse number 6 of John 10. Verse number 5. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. And that is why you cannot just follow any prophet online. You cannot just follow any teaching online. You must be connected to your shepherd. If you follow a stranger, it is very easy for you to be lost. Then now we are coming to this. He says in the second part, he says, I shall not want. I shall not want. Other versions say, I shall not lack. What does this point us to? I shall not lack. That means there is supply. You see, God is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. I began by saying the nature of God, when God revealed himself to man, man gave God a name based on the revelation that he had. Now, when we look at I shall not want, we are seeing a God that supplies. I declare this morning under this grace and anointing, may the Lord supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. When you have a relationship with the Father, there's going to be a supply coming down. The supply will begin to come down. When you have a relationship with the Father, when you pay your tithes, I know there are so many doctors out there. God commands us that we must pay our 10%. And when we pay our 10%, He will rebuke the devourer for our sins. Our Father in faith, Pastor Doc, has been teaching us on uh, uh, dealing with financial crisis. And one of the things He said is that we must be in a place of paying our tithes. Be everything that we own, 10% of what we have, we have to give it unto God. Then God will, 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 will release a commanded blessing in our lives. And that is why if we must give our tithes, we don't give tithes out of a, doc, a, a, a religious mentality, but we give our tithes out of revelation that there may be meat in the house of God. Now when there is meat in the house of God, the supply will automatically come because there is a relationship between the giver and the receiver. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, if somebody can understand me this morning. There is a relationship between the giver and the receiver. Now, the Bible says the hand that giveth is the hand that receiveth. Now, God says as you give the 10%, he says that is out of relationship. Not out of obligation, but out of relationship. Out of covenantal relationship. Out of connection to God. When I give my tithes, when I give my offerings, when I give my sacrifices, when I connect to God in this level, then it says you have a relationship with Him. Gather to me, my saints. Psalms chapter 50, verse number 1. Gather to me, my saints, who have made a covenant with me. By what? By what? By sacrifice. Then it says, because of a relationship, then I will now begin to supply. I will open up the windows of heaven and I will pour out a blessing on you that you will not have room enough to contain it. Oh my goodness. If you are a tither, receive this word. If you are a tither, if you are a giver, if you are committed to the principles of the kingdom of God, forget about the strange voices out there that are fighting tithes and offerings and standing with the work of God. Forget about those voices. I'm teaching you the word of God. I'm reading the scripture to you. If you have been a faithful tither, I declare in the name of Jesus, your supply will never cease because you are, you are, you, your supply is tied to your giving. Oh, I just preached right there. Your supply is always tied to your giving. Then he says that I shall not want. In other words, all I have, all that I need. So everything that you need, God says he will supply it to you. 
The Lord is is the good shepherd. So we are his sheep. We are not frightened. We are not massive animals. We are, but we are obedient followers. If you are an obedient child of God, say, I am obedient to the voice of God. Type, I am obedient to the voice of God. So we are obedient followers. Wise enough know uh, to follow the one who will lead us in the right places and the right ways. Now, this psalm does not focus on the animal like qualities of sheep, but on the discipleship qualities. We are not looking at the animals, but we are looking at these animals and, and picking some traits here and putting them into the qualities that we are supposed to walk in as the children of Zion. Praise the name of the Lord. There are some qualities that we are supposed to walk in as the children of what? Of Zion. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we look here and we, we realize that we are supposed to have the discipleship qualities of those who follow. When you recognize the good shepherd, you will follow that shepherd. So there is supply. I shall not want. That is supply. Then the Bible says, he says down here, he maketh me lie down in the green pastures. He maketh me lie down in the green pastures. In other words, he lets me to rest in the green meadows. Hallelujah. 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 I declare to somebody, God is just about to make you become something. I declare to somebody watching me this morning, God is about to make you. God is just about to make you. He's about to make you rest. He's about to make you become. He's about to make you be that which people never thought you could be. He's about to give you that peace you've been crying for for so long. God is about to give you the joy of your salvation. God is giving you the peace that surpasses human understanding. The Bible says God makes his makes you to lie in the green pastures. I don't know what you're going through, but I can relate with the difficult times you're facing. But I declare over Kenya, God is about to make us enjoy the peace. God is making this nation to come to a place of COVID-free nation. I was reading the, 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 the internet yesterday, and I realized that Israel has not registered even a single case of COVID. And I, I understood by the word of God that, that Israel is a blessed nation. We stand by the voice of Yahweh. We declare Kenya will be COVID free. We declare that we shall rejoice again. We shall not be bound by the mass and the sanitizers. We are coming back to the place of the original blueprint of God because God says he is about to make us become that which he has always desired to become. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said, somebody shout hallelujah. You know, David uh, was the eighth son of Jesse. He was not the preferred one. But when God wants to make you somebody, God will pick a nobody and make them somebody. God will pick somebody and make them uh, and make them somebody. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. It doesn't matter what people think you are. I keep saying and I keep saying this, that people can downsize you. People can downgrade you. People can weigh you in their scales. But when God is about to make you, he says he will make you. He says he's making you. He is making you. He says he maketh me to lie by the green pastures. I want you to understand that God cannot be explained, but God is only revealed. That is why there are things God is about to do in your life today. And I'm speaking prophetically. There are things God is going to do today in your life that you will not need to explain to people. The revelation of God in your life, how God will make, what God is making you to become, will be the enough testimony that you have encountered a God who changes the story of man. Because God cannot be explained. He can only be revealed. And when you show up again, after the Lord down is lifted. When you show up again, there will be an evidence of God. Karaso Palakanda. That is why the God spoke to us this year. That 2021 is the year of the evidences of God. That means we shall not explain anything. But when we show up, 
There will be evidences all around us. I declare may the evidence of God be in your life. I say may the evidences of God be all around your life. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. Why? Because he he leads he, he, he leads he leads you to the green pastures. He makes you to lie down in the green pastures. I'm talking about a God who shall not fail even a single day. He has not failed before. He has not failed now. He will not fail tomorrow. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That thing you are trusting God for, I declare because He's God, He changes not and He follows His word. You see that it comes to pass. May this be your portion today in the name of Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. I feel, I feel a release in my spirit. I feel a release. I feel a release. There is something that God is doing. There is a release in my spirit this morning. There is something that God is doing. He is a God of the green pastures. Hey, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus, we worship you. Somebody worship him for one minute. Just worship him for a minute. Worship him for a minute. Worship him for a minute. The glory of the Lord is here. The glory of the Lord is here. You know, sheep don't sink because they are on water. But they sink because water comes in them. God wants you to be in a place of still waters. God wants to be in a place of green pastures. He makes you to lie down in green pastures. That is rest. God is giving somebody a rest right now. I don't know what you're going through. Maybe it's a divorce. Maybe it's a dysfunctional marriage. Maybe it's a financial crisis. Maybe it's just chaos in your family. Maybe it's just attacks after attacks, war after war. Maybe you've been in a season of contemplating suicide. I cast that demon out of you right now in the name of Jesus. I command the peace of God that surpasses human comprehension to come upon you. May God make you, make you to lie down. You may not want, but God is going to make you. You may not want to be where, you are, where, where there is peace, but God is going to make you this morning. You may not want to be in a place of peace and serenity, but God is going to make you this morning. Somebody shout, God is making me to become. Somebody holler, God is making me to become. Somebody holler, your confession is your possession. Say, God is making me to become in the name of Jesus. Then that we seem to be given power to become the sons of God. You can be a son of God until there's a relationship. And then there's a supply. And then there is rest. Oh my goodness. There's going to be a relationship. Then there's going to be supply. And then there's going to be rest. Oh my goodness. You see, God will never. That's what the Bible says. The blessings of God make the trees and add no soil. Because when God begins to supply, oh my goodness, He gives you rest. When God begins to supply, He gives you rest. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, David was a shepherd boy, but within David, being a shepherd boy, there was a great destiny. And sometimes when attacks come in your life, is a significance of the great destiny that is ahead of you. And the devil will never fight anything that has no destiny. So God says, when the devil comes in, like a flood, his Holy Spirit will raise up a standard and raise up, raising up the standard means God is lifting you above your adversaries. God is lifting you above your enemies. God is lifting you above the cares of this world. God is lifting you above the debts. God is lifting you above anything that will take away your comfort. So when God blesses you, the blessings of God are irrevocable. They are without repentance. The gifts of God, when they are released in a righteous child's life, then those things stay in you. Oh, uh, am I speaking to somebody's heart this morning? Is this what touching somebody's heart this morning? One thing I know is we serve a God who has never failed. 
So when you see these attacks come early in your life, it means that the destiny is very recent. That's why I, I, I'm speaking to people who have been through something. That is why he says somewhere, though you walk through, and I'm coming to that, that he says now, he says somewhere there, he says now that he leads me beside the still waters. And then he leads me beside the still waters. What does that mean? It means that God is going to refresh you. So number one, he's giving you what he needs a relationship. Then he will supply. Then he will give you rest. And then when he leads you beside the still waters, he's going to refresh you. God is going to refresh you. I preached the other day on the importance of having a refreshed shepherd. And God began to speak to my heart. I went back and watched that sermon. And God began to speak to my heart. He told me, son, the reason why I want to be in a place of being refreshed and being fresh every day is because when you are in a place of rest, please listen to me, and I am refreshing you, it is very easy for you to focus and hear my voice. Many people don't hear the voice of God because they are not refreshed. There are so many cares of this world that are besetting people left, right, and center. And because people are not constantly being refreshed by the shepherd, because maybe their shepherd is also in turmoil, so there is no flow of fresh man, then the danger is that church cannot grow. The danger is the day that Elijah killed the 450 prophets of God, and nobody refreshed him after that conquest on the mountain. He went and told God, Father, kill me. I'm not good. I'm as good as a dead dog. I don't deserve to live. And I tell you the truth, when your shepherd is not refreshed, when you are not in the place of being refreshed, there will be no flow of daily manner. There will be no flow of refreshment. And I pray you catch the revelation and begin to refresh your shepherds. I pray you catch the revelation and begin to refresh your shepherds. Oh my goodness. He says, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Something about the still waters. You can never find the God of green pastures where there is no water. If you're going to talk about the God of green pastures, then there must be a source of water. What makes a plant green is the water that flows. And God says, I will make you lie down in the green pastures. That means I'm going to give you rest. And then I will lead you beside the still waters. God wants you to go to a place of rest. God wants us to be in a place of rest. And I declare this morning to somebody watching me, may you enter into that place of rest. May you enter into that place where the God of the green pastures will be your God. I declare may the God of green pastures be your God. Somebody holler Jesus. Somebody holler Jesus. Oh my God. Oh my God. Then what did he say? He says, he restores my soul. He restores my soul. That means God is giving you healing. I speak healing in your marriage. I speak healing in your life. I speak healing in your relationships. I speak healing in your spiritual walk with God. If you have fallen short of the glory of God, I speak a restoration. May God heal you. May God restore you. May God bring you back to Eden. In the place where there is supply and there is peace, and there is everything, there is a relationship. May God restore your soul. There are so many things you've gone through. The cares of this world. You've been downtrodden. You've been beaten by people. You've been accused of stuff. I speak healing. I speak healing, not just to your body, but even to your soul. Listen to the scripture. The Bible says, he restores my soul. He restores my soul. He does not restore the body. Because God knows healing comes from the soul. He, healing comes from within. So he's going to restore your soul. 
when this oh my goodness i wish someone can get this stuff oh my god if god restores your soul the body will automatically be restored and that is why god say the things of the spirit can only be understood by the understanding of the spirit that is why you cannot just take things casually when i'm talking about this stuff you have to dig in the depths of the spirit he restores your soul that means god is giving you divine healing in your soul in your spirit and then automatically the body must comply that's why the bible says fear not he that can kill the body but fear him that can kill both the body and the soul oh my god in 2013 when i died at mata hospital my soul was restored and the body automatically came back to life these are the things that are called mysteries revelations now why i love god so much is that no amount of money brought me back no amount of connection brought me back it was god who gave me the bible psalms 118 verse 17 told me son you shall not die but live to proclaim the goodness of god and that is why i'm telling you your, your your realities are based on your revelation your encounters is what makes the basis of your revelation receive your healing right now if you are sick in any part of your body i speak to you right now Please come back with a testimony after, right in the service. I'm not saying after, right now, right now, right now. If you are sick in any part of your body, hold that part. I speak divine healing. Receive divine instant healing right now. There's somebody watching with a stomach upset. I command divine healing. I command that those gases, those bubbles to leave your body right now, right now, right now. Whoever it is, comment and confirm. Whoever it is that is feeling some absence in your belly, I command the healing right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody who is feeling that back pain, I command that healing. Come on, receive your healing right now. Receive your healing right now, right now, in the name of Jesus. Because God is restoring your soul. I said God is restoring your soul. God is restoring your soul. You see, God, the God that I serve is not a comedian. Whatever he says, that is what he does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that is you, comment and say, if you are, if, touch and feel if something is happening and confirm that testimony. Then he says, he leads me in the paths of uh, righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me in the paths of of righteousness what does this mean this means that god is gonna give you guidance if there is something that you need in 2021 it is the guidance of the holy ghost if you're gonna enjoy the evidences of god you must have a relationship then you will supply then he will give you rest then he will refresh you then he will heal you and then he will guide you god is guiding you he leads you in the paths of righteousness. You see, God is so righteous. God is so holy. God is so just that his nature, he's so, he so righteous that unrighteousness can't be found in him. That is why if you're living a double life, unakula hapa na pale, umekoka nusu, ukoka shitani nusu, bado jaokoka, okoka vizuri. Give your life to God afresh. Because if God is going to lead your life, if God is going to lead you in the path of righteousness, he must guide you. Who is guiding your life? Who is guiding your life? He guides me along the right paths. In fact, this version says, and brings honor to his name. You know, a good, a good Bible student will have different versions. You have that version, you have this version, I have this version, I have this version. I'm trying to compare this. This version says, he, he, he guides me along the right paths. That's why you cannot walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You cannot gossip with the same mouth that worships God. You cannot abuse people with the same mouth that says, Father, bless me. You cannot wish other people to be to down. Uh, you cannot pray and fast for other people's downfall and expect the same mouth to say, God bless me. No. Hallelujah. 
Am I teaching somebody this morning? Hallelujah. Rita Dominic, I'm seeing you. Reverend Tony, I'm seeing you. Mary Cyrus, I'm seeing you. Now he says this. He guides you along the right paths and bringing honor to his name. In other words, for his name's sake, that means there is purpose. There is purpose. The reason why God wants to guide you is that he may be glorified through you. The reason why you have gone through the pains you've gone through. Please listen to me. This is for somebody here. I feel this word is for somebody here. The reason why you have gone through the pain of, a draw, of a withdrawn bank accounts, the pains in your relationships, the pains in your name, you have been ostracized. And it was not in the private arena. It was made a public spectacle. God says your crucifixion had to be made public so that your resurrection can be authentic. So that the people who abused you, the people who ganged up against you, the staff that came up against you, the pains that you endured, the sicknesses you went through, when people see you march up again, they will say this is not the work of man. This is the hand of God. For his name's sake, the purpose of your tribulations was that God may be glorified in your life. In other words, God is saying in my spirit right now to tell somebody that your situation was an altar for the glory of God. That when you come out of what you've gone through, you cannot take the glory, but he can take the glory because this was for his name's sake. I don't know who this word is for, but if this word resonates your spirit, Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. You are coming back with a testimony that when I was watching that live stream, there is some that came in my spirit and I received an impartation because this task is not a barrier in the realms of the spirit. Come back with a testimony. Come back with a testimony. I'm seeing a text message coming in that I am now healed. My stomach, hallelujah. Someone is texting on my page here. And he's saying, I was blotted. Right now, I just rushed. I just rushed to... to what is this? Uh, E-text, he lives with, I just rushed. Is this OC? Just a minute. Let me get this text to be good. Someone is sending me a message here. He's saying, I just rushed to OC. I guess this might be, be clinic. Uh, because I'm saying, I, I, I rushed to the, to, to the OC. And bought paracetamol and now nasikia nafu. Somebody praise the Lord right there. I said right now. Somebody praise the Lord right there. You see, when we release divine verdicts, we are not talking about tomorrow. Instant. I'm still waiting for this one who has a back pain. Hold that back. I release healing right now. Receive your divine healing right now. You will testify before I end this service. So he says, Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Is there somebody who has encountered the valley? I have encountered it. I have died before. I have come back. I'm telling you the truth. I have gone through escapades in life. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? One day somebody asked me this question. And I said, I may not understand the ways of God. But one thing I know, all things work together for good unto them that are called to his purpose. And this sister was going through a season that was very difficult. I did not have words of encouragement to her. Neither did I have words of good comfort to her. But I said, God knows why some things must happen. When they will happen. How they will happen. When they will happen. And why they will happen. The best that we can do is to trust the God of Psalms 23. 
He is your shepherd. And God will never lead you in a place he cannot take you out. In the journey of life, there are three things you must encounter. You are either coming into a storm, you are either in a storm, you are either, or you are either walking out of a storm. Those are the three phases of life that I've come to realize every child of destiny must go through because we are shaped by the testimony. That's what the Bible says, that we defeat the devil by the blood of the Lamb, number one, which is Jesus Christ, and by the power of our testimony. Right now, someone just testified that the stomach apt they were having is gone. The devil has been defeated right there. Someone is going to testify again of what God has done. There's going to be victory right there. And I told this child of God, you know what, daughter? At the end of the day, if you understand that the Lord is your shepherd, Marco Rado Bacanto Liba Zakaya, when you understand that the Lord is your shepherd, and God is the one who is guiding you for his name's sake, that he may be glorified in you, then sometimes we will not lament. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil. Why does God allow you to walk through the valley of the shadow of death? Because God sometimes will allow testing to come. Hmm. There will be no promotion without a demotion sometimes. There will be no glory without a testing. There will be no favor without a testing. Sometimes the boat has to be shifted. Sometimes your faith has to be tried and tested. But Jesus told Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, I have seen Satan has desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. There is something I want to pray for you this morning, that no matter what happens, you may have lost your job because of the COVID uh, uh, redundancy at the place of work. You may have lost your, your daily supply, but I want to challenge you. Have you lacked what to eat? Suddenly, no. Have you lacked what to wear? Suddenly, no. Why don't you just praise God right there? Because he allowed you to walk in the valley of the shadow of death. Yet, uh, he tested you in the valley. I want you to understand the God of the valley is still the God of the hills. The God of the valley is still the God of the hills. If he saw you through the valley, he's going to put you on the hills. You are about to celebrate because God has come to your rescue. And he says, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. I will fear, somebody type, I will fear no evil. Somebody type, I will not fear evil. Though they slay me by the night, they come by the hours of the day. Though they slay me, yet I will trust in the name of the Lord. Though the devil comes in like a flood, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. The house of wickedness, they will gang up against me, but I will fear no evil. Why will I not fear evil? Because that is God protecting me. He protects me. Why does he protect me? For thou art with me in the valley of the shadow of death. I am not stagnant in this valley. I am moving. I walk. I am walking. I am crawling. I am running. I am flying. The issue is I am moving. This is a passing cloud. I am moving. I will fear no evil because he's protecting me. That no fear of evil means God is protecting us. And then thou art with me. That is the faithfulness of God. You are too faithful to fail us. He is too faithful to disappoint you. This kind of God will never disappoint a child of Zion. He has never disappointed us before. He will not disappoint us even now. We are bouncing back to church with a new grace, with a new glory, because we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But the church in Kenya we prayed and fasted. He's a God who says, when you call unto me, I will answer. And when I answer, I will show you great and mighty things. I declare for somebody watching right now. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may this God show you great and mighty things. May God come to your rescue. May God show his faithfulness. You will fear no evil. Because even in that valley, even in that fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God is in that fire. Oh my God. 
Joy Chichi is saying, I will fear no evil. Mary is saying, yes, you are too faithful to fail me. Pastor Jackie is saying, yes, I will fear no evil. Rita is saying, hallelujah, I declare you will fear no evil. Oh, Sharada Bakada Bahanda. I want to hold it up here. It's one hour. I want to close up here. We'll finish this day evening service. We will fear no evil. If God is for you, who can be against you? If God is for you, who can be against you? Watoto wa Mungu wacha niwambie kitu moja. If there is something that I will never allow the devil to toil with, is my faith in God. If there is something you should never give the devil a chance, is your relationship with God. I'm talking about the God of green pastures. This God that leads you to the green pastures. There's a place called green. There's a place where God wants you to be. We mungu watawacha unyauke. We mungu watawacha Waribike. It's Romans 8.31 If God is for you Who can be against you? I know they came in many ways But God will scatter them in a thousand ways I don't care what the devil said I don't care what the devil tried to do But if God is for you Who can be against you? Achola Achola you will fear no evil God is coming to your rescue. God is coming to your rescue, child of God. I want us to pray. I will be picking up. I will picking up from thy rod and thy staff comfort me. 7 p.m. on the dot, I will be here. 7 p.m. on the dot, I will be here. Right now, I want us to give our tithes and our offerings. Go ahead and give your tithe and your offering. The numbers are on the screen. Go ahead and give your tithe and your offering. The MPESA number is 0798053610. Just go ahead and give your tithe, give your offering. Our TIL number is there, 5825381. Go ahead and give. Uh, it can be also put up on the comment section. Uh, uh, tithe to TIL number, it will give you the name full Ama Fellowship Church. Uh, buy goods and services. The number is uh, 5825381. Send it right there. Or you can send to the... You can send to the M-Person number 0798053610. Zero seven nine eight. If you bring the name Grace, zero seven nine eight zero five three six one zero. If you bring the name Grace, that is the church line. It is with admin, so it's not coming to a personal pass to, to an individual. It is going to the church account. Uh, you can send to the till number. It is right there. Um, or you can send to the M Pesa number. That is right there. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Glory to God. I want to pray for you. Don't go offline. I want to pray. I want to release some blessings to your life. Right about now. Hallelujah. How many of us have been blessed? If you have given your tithe, if you have given your all your offering, say, I am blessed. Just type, I am blessed. If you have given, just type, I am blessed. We are not giving out of question. We are giving because God has blessed us. We are giving because the Lord has blessed us. I want us to, we'll pick it up from there in the evening service. So I want us to, about this moment, I want us to, to pray. If you have given, say, I am blessed. Just say, I am blessed. Just say, I am blessed. Have you been blessed by today's service? Hallelujah. Let's just, just do a quick recap. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want... He makes me lie in the green passes. Type, type that, type, type what you've learned. He's your protector. He's your guider. He's your supplier. Type what you've learned for one minute. Just type what you've learned for one minute. Just type what you've learned for one minute. He's your protector. 
is your healer, is your comforter. Amen, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now, your children are tuning in. And many of them are going through seasons. Some of these seasons are painful episodes. In the name of Jesus, your word says we call unto you and you will answer. In the name of Jesus, Father, you are here. We worship you. Let's just worship God for one minute before I release the blessings that we pause.
Jesus. God bless you. You are highly favored. You are favored of the Lord. Next Sunday, next Sunday, we shall be meeting in church. Somebody pray the Lord right there with me. We will be meeting in church. Sheikh Karume Street, Hotel Central Park on the fourth floor, Full Armor Fellowship Church. We will be gathering in church once again. And I just want to put this out here. If you are a daughter or a son in this ministry, I want you to partner with us in offsetting the bill towards the rent. I'm going to give you my number. If you want to send a seed towards the rent uh, of the church in town, you say, man of God, I just want to be part and parcel of ensuring the house of God is open. In box, send an SMS to the number 0798053610 and I will call you. I will call you from my private number and I will pray with you as I receive that seed. Send uh, a message that I want to I want to partner to ensure that the church is open. We want to pay those bills this week so that next week we are good to be in church. Send to the number 0798053610. Send a message, a text message to that number. And then I will call you. And I will pray with you. I want to assure you, this is what I feel in my spirit. I want to assure you that God, you can never live, make the house of God open and have your house locked. And so partner with me to ensure that the church is open for us next Sunday. The Lord will supply and your doors will always be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. I will be seeing you at 7 p.m. by the grace of God. In Jesus' name. Faf Television Network, reaching nations, touching lives, and transforming.